one time when I was in kindergarten, we were all on the rug, docile ducklings preparing for sing time, and my classmate Alyssa told Miss Jenny she had to pee. She raised her hand and said, Miss Jenny, may I go to the bathroom? And Miss Jenny said, no, Alyssa, you can wait until after sing time. So we proceeded to sing a couple verses in wretched harmony of McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. And Alyssa interjected again, said, Miss Jenny, I really gotta go. And Miss Jenny said, no, Alyssa, sit down. A couple more rounds of this. And finally, Alyssa stood up. I remember peering up at her from the left behind her, a couple rows, cheeks probably reddening on her behalf. And she said defiantly, fine, I'll go now then. Before my <laughs> small mind could register what exactly she meant by that, wetness was seeping through her baby blue tights as she made direct, unflinching eye contact with Miss Ginny. Miss Ginny didn't know what to say. She just stood there with her, her mouth agape and her palms facing up toward the ceiling. My mind goes blank after that, but that day I was in awe of her shamelessness. When I think back on that now, Alyssa's rebellion was punk. An act even Joe Strummer could get behind. I am reminded every day, as a Manny ferrying Greg and Rachel, the twins, back and forth to the same elementary school that I went to, how meek I really am. I am a Manny and a wannabe drummer. As an artist, I think you have to be comfortable metaphorically pissing yourself in front of a room full of kindergartners and I can never. I even care what Greg and Rachel think of me and they're literally eight. Greg has been calling me a Muppet all week. Hasn't really bothered me that much, but Rachel, who is unsurprisingly a little more mature than Greg, has taken to calling me Simple Man, which feels like she's skidded straight into my soul and seen nothing there to be taken note of. I'm avoiding working for the clampdown and seeking the artistic life, but every free moment when I'm not babysitting, I stuff with listening to podcasts or records or watching TV just so I don't have to be in my mind. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just spend time Googling high profile divorces to remember that life is long and people make mistakes. Xerox machines and desk job would be a comfort to me now. I need some tedium that is not derived from my own lack of creative motivation. Who are those people who scribble lyrics on a notepad on their commute or record snippets of odd ideas in, in free moments? I always thought I was one of those people, but now that I have the time and the agency I can't do it. Nervous doesn't even begin to describe how it feels to be alone. It's more like paralysis. <laughs> my brain says drum and my body responds catatonic. I started drumming when I was about Greg and Rachel's age, a few years after Alyssa pulled her stunt. I had a teacher who pulled me into the hall one time and told me that I was all feeling. And he meant that in a good way. I got totally obsessed with The Clash, wanted to be just like Topper. In my teens, me and some guy friends started a band, which we called Brooklyn Calling, which makes me cringe with embarrassment now. But during our shows and rehearsals, I was able to give into that feeling of self-annihilation. 
There was school, friends, and drumming. And then I went to college, and I met people who were better than me at everything, and I got my heart broken, and I graduated, and then I came back home, and I needed money, and my parents knew Greg, and Rachel's parents were volunteering in the park, and they referred me, and now I am here in this stupid yellow raincoat, too scared to be an artist, about to go pick them up in pouring rain, <laughs> and spending the minutes telling this Alyssa story so that I don't have to try and be creative or follow my dream or be reminded that maybe I don't even have one. All of your best friends are going to be in this program. All of them. Gift that keeps on giving. Be messy and be crazy and have fun. You really can push yourself to do amazing things in such a limited period of time. The best art needs limitations and the greatest limit of all time is time. Actors, directors, writers, producers, and composers that are changing the game in theater, film, and television. The artists that are as kooky and crazy and imaginative and as go-for-it-minded as you are. And those connections extend to collaborations I have today, and I am so grateful for that experience. Hearing from other artists and like more established professionals was just really useful. It's really an experience that challenges you as an actor, director, playwright, whatever you're doing, producer, and allows you to experience that thrill of art making in just the best form with some really great people. It's about being bold. It's about challenging yourself. It's gonna teach you the lessons that you'll be able to take with you through every audition and every rehearsal and every show. Trust your instincts because they're correct and you don't have time to second guess them anyway. The 24 Hour Plays has provided such an amazing community for me and I would not be the artist I am today without it. Don't hold back. Embrace the stress and just go for it.